And how y'all doing today? Happy Resurrection Sunday! Hey man, so glad to be here today. I ain't been this excited about a Sunday morning service since last Sunday. Hey man, and on top of it, it's what technically what the generally is called Easter Sunday. But I'm so grateful that that we're not worrying about the the bunny rabbit today. We ain't worrying about the Easter eggs today. We're looking for the empty tomb. Hey man, I'm glad that Joseph of Arimathea loaned Jesus that tomb because hey he. Knew Jesus didn't need it but for a couple of days three days actually three days three nights and up from the grave he arose hallelujah Christ arose hey man hey let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer and we'll get started today our most gracious father in heaven we do thank you Lord for all you've done for us I want to pray Lord for your blessings upon this day uh, ask you father for my wife's not feeling very well here Pray, Lord, for healing for her. Does she get the feeling better as quickly as possible? Uh, get some rest, yes. Uh, do pray, Lord, for all those who are hurting today, uh, physically, uh, spiritually, mentally. Uh, pray, Father, for Pastor Charlie Sarton, as he'll be consulting with the doctor on Wednesday about the uh, what to do in regards to the results from that angiogram. Uh, pray, Lord, for everything for him to, to go smoothly and uh, be able to have that back surgery soon as well. Pray, Father, for Henry Allen and Wesley Pawson and their medical issues. Mom and Dad as they're dealing with Dad's dementia. All the people out there battling this uh, corona stuff. Help us, Father, please. And we know there are certainly a great many who are in need of financial help, job help, relationships, uh, schooling. Yeah, schooling too. And we ask you, Father, for all the pastors and preachers who will be standing to bring your holy word today. Help each and every one of us, Father, please, to present the word the way that you'd have us to. That some soul out there will see their need to be saved before it is everlasting too late. Pray, Lord, for all the Sunday school teachers as well as they're bringing forth the lessons. And for all those who will be hearing that they will take and bring into their their hearts what it is that's being presented to them in, in the uh, the lessons, the songs, the, the sermons uh, that's going to take place today. Lord, that they will see how it is that they can serve you better and then actually go forward and use it. Thank you, God, for loving us and saving us. Thank you, Father, for saving a wretch like me, even though I prove on a daily basis I do not deserve it. Thank you, Father, for saving me. That's it for now, Father. We'll talk to you in a little bit. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. All righty. Hey, how about we start with this great little ditty right here? He lives. Yes. <clears throat> he ain't dead. Let me just add something here real quickly, too. Uh, he didn't come up out of the grave this morning. <laughs> he did, did that a few years ago. <laughs> yes, he is alive forevermore. <laughs> All right. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. And he walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. Well, he lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. And he walks with me, and he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. Well, he lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek. Him, the help of all who find, none other is so loving, so good and kind. And he lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. And he walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. Will you ask me how I know? 
know he lives. You see, he lives within my heart. Hey, man, a hey, man. So grateful for that first Resurrection Sunday. Hey, Amen. Without it, Calvary's useless. Without it, that first Christmas morning means nothing. Without it, I'm just a sinner bound for hell. But with it, it all's worthwhile. Hey, man, let me get a little bit of water here, and we will sing at Calvary. We'll slow it down here a little for you. But not much. Mm-hmm. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. By God's word at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the law I'd spurned. Till my guilty soul employing turned to Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Amen, amen. Oh, I'm so glad it's not about the Easter Bunny. It's not about the eggs, the, all the chocolate. Although, thank God for white chocolate Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Mm, man, those puppies are good. I, I like the, the white chocolate uh, uh, Easter eggs that Reese's comes out with every year, man. My soul, those are good. <laughs> but not as good as Jesus. Mm -mm, not in the least. Yes. All right. Uh, we're going to be uh, preaching today on 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And uh, while you're turning there, I'd like to try to do a special for you. <clears throat> Many years here you stayed, showing others the way. In a world filled with sin and despair, you became sin for me. Hanging there on a tree, showing mercy and grace, God, you care. Precious light of Bethlehem, in a manger your life began. Hanging there on a tree. You died for me, the only sacrifice that would stand. Though I failed through the years, causing many a tear, you were always right there when I'd fall. So unworthy am I, causing that lamb to die. What a price that you paid for us all. Precious light of Bethlehem, 
in a manger your life began. Hanging there on a tree, you died for me. The only sacrifice that would stand. From beginning of time, you were there all the time, standing there at the Father's right hand. Taking form of a man, you were the spotless lamb, shedding innocent blood on Calvary. Precious light of Bethlehem, in a manger your life began. Hanging there on a tree, you died for me, the only sacrifice that would stand. The only sacrifice that would stand, that would stand. Amen, amen. I am thankful. The blood of bulls and goats couldn't get the job done. Blood of the firstborn of Egypt couldn't get the job done. The prayers of Father Abraham couldn't get the job done. None of the blessed saints could get the job done. My mama couldn't get the job done. My pastor couldn't get the job done. My church couldn't get the job done. My religion couldn't get the job done. My denomination couldn't get the job done. But my Jesus, he did get the job done. Hey, Amen. All right, so let's take those Bibles and run quickly over to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. And we're going to be closing out our series here today on these young men. And we're going to be looking at a very special young man. The title of our sermon is The First Young Man. Now, we're not, we're not looking at Adam. I know he was the first created man. We're looking at the first young man. We're looking at Jesus here today. And I realize that he is God incarnate. That he stepped out of eternity and into time. So as that he could do what he did to buy my salvation. But he was 33 years old when he died there on that cross. Um, I gotta stop and think, yeah, I think I'm 46. <laughs> That's how good my mind works. I'm getting old. I, I know to some people I'm a I'm a young squirt still. Uh, that that's okay. To my daughter, I'm an old dog. <laughs> but Jesus was just a young man as far as humans go. So why are you pointing that out, preacher? He's God. Yes, he is. He, he's the second member of the Godhead. Yes, he is. He's God the Son. Yes, he is. But my Bible tells me he's man as well. Yes, he is my propitiation. He is my high priest. And when we get to heaven, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Because there in heaven, I said there in heaven, yes, is going to be God the Son, Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, with his perfect human body. The only blemish in all of heaven, the only blemish. Is going to be the scars in his body from what he endured going to Calvary on my behalf, on your behalf. 
the nail prints in his hands and feet, the, the wound in his side, the, the scars along his head from where the crown of thorns was crushed into his brow, the stripes upon his back. The only imperfections there, but those scars so precious for what they mean to me. Thank God for the scars. I'm grateful for the scars. So he is the first young man. Might be the second Adam. But he's the first young man, church. All right, before I get going any further uh, down that rabbit trail, uh, let's turn over here to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we will look here, begin reading verse number 12. The Bible says, Now, I like that, Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Hmm? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. And your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. Mm, got a problem there, if that's the case, ain't it? Verse 16. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Mm. Verse 18. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Yeah, because if you ain't going to ever come back to life, you dead. You perished. You gone. You out of here. Verse 19. If in this life only. That, that's because if Christ didn't rise again, there's no second life. So if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable because we've been wasting our time. It, it, it's all been a big hoax if Christ is not risen. 20. But, I like that when God butts in. But, now is Christ risen from the dead. Someone say hallelujah right there. And become the first fruits of them that slept. As we said, we want to bring our sermon here today on this thought of the first young man. Abba, Father, we do thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, for another golden opportunity to stand here and bring your word to your people. And I hope and pray, Father, if there's anyone who's tuning in, whether it be here on the live broadcast on Facebook or later on down the road there on YouTube or, or listening to the audio on sermonaudio.com, that they will get exactly what it is that they need. And if they need to get saved, that they will get saved. Not because it's me, no not because I'm preaching, no. But because of Jesus and what Jesus did for us. We pray, Father, for all the prayer requests, Lord, that you please would take care of them. And especially for my wife, she's not feeling good at the moment. Pray, Lord, for her that she get the rest she needs and uh, get the feeling better. Pray, Lord, for all the services that are going to be going on today on this glorious resurrection day. That you would receive all the honor and glory possible. I know you'll never receive all the honor and glory that you do deserve, though. But help us, Lord, please, to do our best to bring as much to you as possible. We thank you, Father, for hearing us. Not because of us, but because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ shed there on the cross at Calvary. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Thank you, Father, for all the multitudes of blessings that you've given us. Even all the blessings we could have had, but we weren't in your will. So we missed out on them, but you still had it for us. Help us, Father, please, to walk worthy of you. To lay aside the sin and the weights which does so easily beset us. So as we can run that race. Strive to press forward for the prize of the high calling. So as one day we'll be able to lay our rewards at Jesus' feet. For he alone is worthy. 
We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. If you'll notice there at the end of verse number 20, it declares that Christ is become the first fruits of them that slept. The word first fruits means quite literally the first fruit or production of the land. It can also extend to the first fruits of an animal. You take a sheep, the, the first sheep that was born of that sheep there, the first lamb that was born, that belongs to God. When God uh, led Israel out of captivity there in Egypt, he declared that the, the firstborn were his, but that what he would do is he would take the, the tribe of Levi unto himself, and then they would just have to redeem whatever number was different. If there were, I don't remember the exact numbers, let's just say there were uh, 200,000 Levites that God would be taking for his own. But firstborn, there was 240,000. Well, that 40,000 had to have uh, a shekel, or half shekel, I believe it was, uh, cast into the uh, treasury there for the redemption. So he, God takes the, God deserves, he should be given the, the first fruits of the land, animals, and people. But you'll notice that God's law never prescribes when it comes to the, the fruit of the land that they were to bring for their offerings, a specific quantity, just the first fruits. Uh, the, the first little bit, you go out to your, your field there and you find are ripe, they belong to God. So even if you've got to go from plant to plant up and down the rows and you get one here and one here and two there, four there, that belongs to God. And whatever's left after you do that initial harvest, you come back, and, and that, that's yours. So why in the world are you bringing that up, preacher? I'm glad you ask. I love when you ask those questions. Uh, because Jesus came to offer up his body as a living sacrifice to die upon the cross of Calvary for fallen mankind. Each one of us were dead in trespasses and sins. We deserved hell, yet Jesus came to buy our salvation. He could have very easily came and done the barest of minimums. Born of Mary comes, lives a perfect life, dies on the cross of Calvary, rises again the third day. Uh, and skipped everything else in between. He could have come and done a half-hearted job about it. But he didn't, church. He came and he gave all. Everything he had, he laid it out there on the cross of Calvary and on the path leading to the cross of Calvary so that you and I could go free. As a result, three days later, and yes, I hold that Jesus was crucified on Wednesday. The Bible says there in Genesis chapter number 1, the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning were the second day. The Jewish calendar worked that way. The evening actually started the 24-hour period. And when the sun goes down at 6 p.m. So he had to be buried by uh, 6 p.m. on Wednesday evening. So you've got Wednesday night and Thursday, Thursday night and a Friday, Friday night and a Saturday. Saturday at 6 p.m., he arose. Yeah, the stone may not have been rolled back until sometime Sunday morning. But he didn't need that stone to be rolled out of the way so as that he could come out. No, sir. He arose. And as he arose, he arose as the first fruit. 100%. The crop to follow may not be 100% of mankind. In fact, it's going to fall very far short of it. But still, he's given the opportunity for the rest of us to join him in heaven. I think that's pretty good. I don't know about you, but I like that. So with all of this in mind here, I'd like to look here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 at just four things that he's the first of as the first young man. May I say first of all here that he is the first to rise 
permanently. Verse number 22 says, For as in Adam all die. In other words, because of Adam's sin there in the Garden of Eden, we all deserve death. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. I like that. I like that. Let me read to you real quickly here a quote from Chuck Colson. Now you say, who is Chuck Colson? Well, he passed away a few years ago. He was in, uh, had this uh, prison fellowship ministry that he did. And uh, before that, he was actually worked for former President Richard Nixon. And he was one of the guys who got caught up in the whole Watergate scandal. He went to jail over it. He was guilty of sin. But in so doing, he found out about Jesus, and he got saved. Let me read to you what Chuck Colson had to say. He said, I know the resurrection is a fact, and Watergate proved it to me. How? Because 12 men testified they had seen Jesus raised from the dead. Then they proclaimed that truth for 40 years, never once denying it. Everyone was beaten, tortured, stoned, and put in prison. They would not have endured that if it weren't true. Watergate embroiled 12 of the most powerful men in the world, and they couldn't keep alive for three weeks. You're telling me 12 apostles could keep alive for 40 years? Absolutely not. <laughs> so Chuck Colson understood Jesus arose from the grave permanently. Now, as you study your Bible and you read through, you will find that there are at least eight specific individuals who were brought back to life. Resurrected. But they had to die again. Yeah, church, they had to die again. Which means that those individuals, uh, plus what Matthew eleven five says, where Jesus told John the Baptist's disciples, hey, go tell John that the dead are raised. So we don't know how many people specifically Jesus did resurrect beyond the three for sure. But there's at least those eight who are going to have to have a second resurrection. But once they have that second resurrection, they ain't going to die again to, to need a third. Amen. There's going to be millions of people who are going to have one resurrection. They have fallen asleep. That, that's what we call uh, the death of a Christian is that they've gone to sleep. Because God is not the, dead, not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Uh, he said he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. They're alive. All their bodies may be dead dust. <laughs> there will be Christians out there whose bodies are ashes, but they're alive with God, and they're going to get one resurrection, never to need another resurrection again. And then the Bible tells us that there's also going to be millions who will never need a single resurrection. Why? Because Jesus is the resurrection. He is the first fruit. He first to rise Permanently. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14 to 17 say this. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. No, uh, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord that's called a permanent resurrection right there church this is talking about the rapture well we ain't gonna have to worry about dying ever again because we have life eternal this flesh may fail I might drop over dead of a heart attack or a stroke or a brain aneurysm but thanks be to God it's heaven bound absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord so I might need one resurrection but I won't need a second I might get away without one period. I don't know. I'm not God. But I know one day I shall see him. May I say not only was he the first to rise permanently, but he is the first to reign 
powerfully. Back there in our text, uh, chapter of 1 Corinthians 15, notice with me in verse 24 down through 26. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Now, there are men and women out there who think they wield a lot of power. What we call the President of the United States, the, the most powerful man in the world. He, he leads the, the country of the United States of America with all of its armed forces. If I remember correctly, our military's budget outspends the next 26 countries combined. We're powerful. Uh, we... We have the natural defense of the two oceans on the sides there. We have, uh, we've been blessed with great resources in agriculture. <clears throat> but even the president of the United States, no matter who he is, still has a problem. They haven't conquered death. Well, I know science fiction has done it multiple times. It can happen in science fiction, fantasy. I know people like to think that they can. But we're all human. It's appointed unto man once to die and after this the judgment. Now some have gone so far as to cheat death. Maybe they've done it a couple of times. They've come close. But. That's what we say, that, that someone has cheated death. Death just sits back and says, uh, it's not a matter of next time, it's a matter of it just wasn't your time. When your time comes, God will take you out. When your time comes, there will be no negotiations. There will be no hiding from it. There will be no buying your way out of it. When your time to die comes... It's your time. But Jesus has power over death because he holds the keys. Revelation chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. This is John writing here. And he laid his right hand upon me. That right hand, that always speaks of power. He laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. I opened up the garage today, so I get here to Garage Baptist. I've got the keys to Garage Baptist right here. I own the building. Because I've got the keys, I don't have to break in. Someone who breaks in ain't the rightful owner. They ain't got the true power over the place. And yeah, I know I'm speaking totally in human terms here. I know it all belongs to God. Don't misunderstand me, church. Someone who breaks in here, yeah, they could steal, they could, they can bust things up, but they don't have the final authority. Jesus says, I have the keys of hell and of death. I reign powerfully over death. There's that song called The Conversation, and it's uh, back and forth between Satan and death. I wish I could think of all the words right now. I really get a kick out of that song. Death, or Satan's talking to Satan. Hey, can you hold them down? Oh, man, the richest men and kings, they, they've come through my dark door, and they ain't, they ain't escaped. Second day, Satan comes to, to death. Hey, hey is it, you still got him. So, man, don't you worry about it, Satan. He can't overpower me. Talking about Jesus now. That third day, Satan comes to death. Man, this is shouting ground for us. We done won. We done got the victory. Jesus has been defeated. God's plans have been defeated. And death just looks at Satan and says, Satan, you got to listen to me, son. This morning, oh, this morning, 
A stone was rolled away. I just couldn't stop him, no. I couldn't hold him down. With power, oh great power, he rose up from the ground. He rose up from the ground. He is risen, yes, he is risen. Hallelujah, he's risen, church. He reigns powerfully. He reigns so powerfully that not only does he hold the keys to death, but in the end, he's going to throw death into the lake of fire. Revelation 20, verse 14, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. He is the first to reign powerfully, church. Man shall never accomplish this. Only my Jesus. Mm. May I say he is the first to restore potential. Skip with me down in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 to verse number 45. The Bible says, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. But as we know, back there in the Garden of Eden, it took six verses for Eve to finally partake of that forbidden fruit. It took four words for Adam to say, not even to say, he just took and he did eat. And he died, and mankind died. Verse 40 goes on to say, the last Adam, let's talk about Jesus here, the last Adam, was made a quickening spirit. That word quickening means to restore. You see, Adam threw it all away for a bite. But Jesus gave it all away for scum, for a worthless sinner. For one down in the gutter who didn't deserve anything short of hell. For all of eternity. He restored potential. He quickened me. Gave me the opportunity to once again to serve God, to love God. The potential is extended out there for whosoever wants to be saved. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, and that's not the globe we live on, but that's talking about humanity, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever! Thank God I'm a whosoever! Are you a whosoever here this morning? You have that everlasting life. Paul wrote in Ephesians 2, 1, And you hath he quickened, which were dead in trespasses and sins. Quickened, made alive, restored. Because when God first created man, it wasn't meant for us to die. God knew that we would sin and we'd be faced with death, both the death of this flesh and the death of eternity in hell. But he'd already, before he even thought about creating planet earth he'd already determined how it is that he would go about making a way for mankind to be saved so as that we could be restored to the potential that he had for us but let me say lastly here in closing our fourth and final point he's the first to rout problems Verse 57 of 1 Corinthians 15 says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory, the conquest through our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, that victory, that conquest, that routing of the problem only came through Jesus Christ. God the Father sat on his throne and he sent his son to die in our place so that God the Father could accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ there and then raise him from the grave the third glorious day. Amen. So that we could have victory. So that we could be saved. See, you can't have victory if you don't have victory. A problem. Common sense. 
You can't have victory if you don't face the problem. Common sense. If you run away, you'll never see victory. And you can't have victory if you don't overcome it. Thank God Jesus overcame it. <laughs> he did just that. He told us there in John 16, 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Which means he overcame every problem here. You say, preacher, you don't know what I've done. I'm a horrible person. I lie all the time. He overcame that lie. He said, preacher, you don't know what I've done. I, I'm, I'm a rapist. He overcame raping. He said, preacher, you don't know what I've done. I, I've murdered people. He overcame murder. He said, preacher, you don't know what I've done. I, I've backtalked my parents. He's overcome your disobedience to your parents. Preach, you don't know what I've done. I've taken God's name in vain. I use it all the time like a regular word. He overcame that blasphemy. So preacher, I cheat on my taxes. He's overcome your stealing. Preach, you don't know why I've come. I look at Playboy. I look at I like looking at the lingerie pictures in the newspaper. He's overcome your lusting. He's overcome the adultery. He's overcome any and every sin. There ain't a single sin you can commit that he did not take care of there on the cross of Calvary, amen? Say, preacher, I have to have lost my, sin, my, my salvation based on my sins. Really? Which one of your sins took him by surprise? He died 2,000 years ago on that cross of Calvary. Which one did he not see when he died on the cross? Duh. He saw them all. And if you could lose your salvation, it means that in some way, shape, or form, your salvation was based on you. Which wasn't actually salvation then. Because there ain't a one of us who could save ourselves. It's on him. It's in him. It's through him we get saved. That we are kept. A God that couldn't keep me, he ain't good enough to have me. A God that can keep me, I'm not good enough for. But thank God for the precious blood of Jesus Christ has been imputed to me that I'm clothed in his righteousness and so that when God the Father looks down at me that looks down at the red sins that I've committed he can only view them through the red blood of Jesus Christ and when you look at something red through something red it makes it white I've been washed whiter than snow because of the first young man. I got a question here for you this morning in closing. It's a very pointed question. Do you know Jesus as your Savior or do you just think you do? Don't miss heaven because of the distance between here and here, church. Because if you ain't got him here, it don't matter what you think here. After all, the Bible tells us you believe that that's great. The devils also believe and they tremble. And they still ain't going to heaven. Let me close with this portion of scripture here found in 2 Corinthians 6.2. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. 
Abba Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for being so good to us, for loving us and saving us. We do pray, Lord, that everyone here in the sound of my voice knows Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And if they truly don't, that they would make today, yes, today, that glorious, glorious day. Thank you, Father, for loving us and saving us. Thank you, Father, for being so wonderful, so kind, so true. Thank you, Father, for that first Easter service, the, the, the resurrection that took place there that day. Because without Jesus rising from the grave, we've got nothing. Thank you, Father. That's it now, Lord. We'll, we'll go ahead and get moving here. Jesus, stand we to pray. Amen and amen. Hope you know him today. If not, now's the time to, to confess to him that you are a sinner who needs to be saved and that you're putting your faith and trust in him. As he said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's through him. Jesus' blood washed away all my sin. We'll accept this price and let him in. Into your heart, into your life. He will help and guide you through strife. He'll give you peace in everything. Oh, what joy this peace will bring. Accept the sacrifice from him. And you'll find great peace within. Do you accept the trials from God, the way that you accept the good? He sends the troubles down to you, for His grace will carry you through. He'll give you peace in everything, oh what joy this peace will bring. Accept the sacrifice from Him, and you'll find great peace within. He gives us trials and troubles. To show he can handle the squabbles. When troubles and trials are o'er, you'll see all his blood will cover. He'll give you peace in everything. Oh, what joy this peace will bring. Accept the sacrifice from him, and you'll find great peace within. He'll give you peace in everything. Oh, what joy this peace will bring. Accept the sacrifice from him. And you'll find great peace within. Amen, amen. I thank you for your attention. May the good Lord go with you throughout the course of your week. Father in heaven, we just ask you one more time here for each and every one as they'll be making their way over to the local assembly later on today uh, for these resurrection services. Each one will, will come with joy in their heart, understanding that it's not about them, but it's about you. We ask you, Father, once again, for all the prayer requests, that you please would take care of them as you see fit. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen.